I'm Dr. Jill O'Donnell Tormey, CEO and Director of Scientific Affairs at the Cancer Research Institute. The Cancer Research Institute is the only not-for-profit organization in the world that's dedicated to funding the discovery and development of cancer immunotherapies for all types of cancer. I'm here at the largest cancer conference of the year, the annual meeting of the American Society of Clinical Oncology. So June is Cancer Immunotherapy Month, so it's certainly fitting that immunotherapy has dominated some of the exciting results being reported here in Chicago over the last few days. So I'm very happy to discuss some of these uh, breakthrough results with three oncologists, Dr. Jed Walchuk and Dr. Jay Park from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center and Dr. Naya Rivsby from Columbia University Medical Center. So thank you all for being here and for discussing what is happening at ASCO and what it means to cancer patients. So I think we'll start with our first question that obviously you've been hearing a lot about checkpoint blockades. Jed? Well, th thank you, Jill, and thanks for the invitation to join in this excellent discussion. The two breaks that are most spoken about uh, are called CTLA-4 and PD-1. And the medicines that are used to block those breaks are called ipilimumab for CTLA-4. And for PD-1, there are actually two approved medicines. One of them is called nivolumab, and the other one is called pembrolizumab. Because those words are kind of a mouthful, we'll just refer to them by their shortened names of ipi, nevo, and pembro. So what is, I, I think uh, yesterday I heard your talk uh, that there's some news about, uh, in melanoma, uh, using nevo and ipi. And has the standard of care for melanoma from after these results, is it going to change for patients? A large 945 patient phase three trial was conducted where patients received ipi alone, nevo alone, or the combination. And the outcomes were the best for the patients who received the combination. So now I'm going to switch to lung cancer. So uh, Nair, that's, you're certainly the expert in lung cancer. And there's been some really exciting data coming out uh, at ASCO the last few days on lung cancer with these checkpoints. This meeting was really important for lung cancer because it was really the first randomized data that showed an improvement in survival with immunotherapy, with nivolumab, compared to standard of care chemotherapy as second line treatment for lung cancer. And both in non-squamous and squamous lung cancer, we saw that nivolumab was able to improve survival in patients with lung cancer. So that's, that's a really exciting statement for, for, for lung cancer patients. And I, yeah. and I know with the continued research, we're going to see more and more coming down. So uh, there was also talk at this meeting about uh, expanding these immunotherapies beyond the melanoma and lung cancer setting. So I think there was some exciting news about liver cancer. At this meeting, we actually heard uh, some results using nivolumab in patients with hepatocellular cancer, uh, where um, there are patients who are responding to that um, in a durable manner. And what's interesting is that it was across different subtypes of liver cancer, because some liver cancers are caused by chronic viral infection with hepatitis viruses, whereas others are, are not virus related. I think the excitement throughout the oncology community is that this is becoming a broadly applicable treatment for many types of cancers. I know that there's been a, a lot of uh, trepidation or fear that, uh, about side effects. That's, that's a great point. Um, the side effects are entirely different than chemotherapy. They, they more resemble inflammation in different parts of the body. And while some patients can get quite sick from some of these side effects, we can um, manage them with, with simple medicines like prednisone. Uh, we've gotten better uh, at managing these side effects over time with more experience. Um, and what's very important to realize is that um, the PD-1 blocking medicines uh, in general have a much better side effect profile than, than IPI does. When we use these drugs, um, it's not uncommon for, you know, for our patients to actually question whether they're actually receiving drug. Um, that's, because, a, that's impressive. <laughs> because they really, uh, they really don't. Some, I think the majority of patients um, don't have uh, much side effects, or if they do, it's really uh, minimal side effects. So now we've heard a lot about the excitement in immunotherapies treating solid tumors, but it's now time to switch to blood cancers. And uh, immunotherapy has a role there too. So um, Jay, I'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit about what is the exciting things happening in blood cancers. Sure. So, I mean, the other way of uh, taking advantage of the immune system is actually taking patients' own immune cells called T cells to genetically modify them to express what's called chimeric antigen receptor, which is abbreviated as CAR. So you know, the particular ones that has generated uh, the most updated data is targeting CD19, which is really the marker that's expressed in a lot of B-cell blood cancers. 
And so uh, these are very powerful. And from the results I've seen uh, in, in at least some trials, you're seeing 90 to 100 percent response rate in, in these uh, B cell ALLs, correct? That's correct. And at this meeting, too, and there are several clinical trials that will be presented, will be talked about showing the response rates uh, close to 50 to 60 percent of the time in this, uh, this chemotherapy refractory uh, patients. It's still a smaller number of patients than ALL, and then these are still phase one trials, so we do have to wait for the large number of patients, but certainly showing the uh, pretty impressive activities in these areas as so well. E so even though these are early studies trials, these, these response rates are quite impressive. So I guess a, a more general question then after going through this is, you know, cancer patients, should they expect uh, in the next few years seeing uh, immunotherapies being spoken about from their regular oncologist more often? Is it going to be an option for more of them? Uh, do they, should they be looking at clinical trials to get into them now? I think it is always important uh, for patients to discuss with clinicians the availability of clinical trials. I mean, that's how progress is made. It often provides access to new uh, therapies before they are commercially available. Um, and so I, I think we can look forward to immunotherapies becoming um, standard parts of more and more uh, cancer treatments. And I know there's an, there's an awful lot of early phase clinical trials testing these various combinations and figuring out what it does. Really exciting news for, for patients and I think more we know more and more is going to be coming down the pike as we as more of these clinical trials mature and there's going to be more options in immunotherapies for patients with all types of cancer. So I really want to thank you for taking the time to come here and give us your perspectives this morning. And if you're a patient or caregiver and you really want to learn more about immunotherapies and what they could mean for you, I'd ask you to please visit our website www theanswertocancer.org. And if you'd like to support the mission of the Cancer Research Institute and help us support the groundbreaking research that is leading to these exciting new breakthroughs in immunotherapies, please visit www.cancerresearch.org. Thanks very much.